Hi, Mr. Hill here. Welcome to S3 Biology. Uh, I'm going to be running through the uh, first lesson, first topic, big topic, important topic on cells. So as we're running through the lessons, you'll come across this symbol uh, quite a lot. Um, guess what? Pause the video uh, and then have a go at the tasks uh, that we're asking you to do. So biology is the study of, of living things and all living things are made up of cells. So it's really, really important that you understand what a cell is uh, and how a cell works, what happens when cells go wrong. Um, animal cells, the, the similarities and the differences between plant and animal cells. So we're, we're going to learn all this through this topic and then eventually we'll, we'll get an opportunity to, to do some practical work and use the, the microscopes to, to actually have a look at some uh, to, to have a look at some cells. So this is the main point of the lesson really that we, these are the main points that we want you to take away from the lesson. We're looking at the similarities and the differences between plant and animal cells in terms of the structure and the function. So function basically means what the different parts of the cells do, what their job is. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain um, why it's so important that we learn about cells, the five main parts, you should be able to label the five main parts of an animal cell, label the eight main parts of a plant cell, and also tell me what each of those parts uh, does. Keywords down the bottom, say them out loud after me, the difficult ones, mitochondria, mitochondria, go on, say it. Good, well done. Uh, cytoplasm, vacuole, chloroplasts, uh, and ribosome. I think you can say the others, but we'll be using those terms quite a lot. So why did I become a teacher? Well, holidays, obviously, um, that's good. Um, putting kids in detention, that's good. Um, but the, the main reason uh, after those two, really, is that I would love one of you listening now to use what you've learned and go and apply it to a problem that we face in the world today. So we are surrounded by, particularly at the moment, things like the coronavirus. We perhaps know people who've suffered from cancer. Um, if we're going to cure these problems, if we're going to solve these problems, then really we need to have a good understanding of cells. We need to understand when they go wrong. Um, and in the case of the coronavirus, we need to understand uh, when these cells get invaded, what we can do to, to protect them. So that's really part of the motivation behind why I teach, but it's also why it's important that we understand cells. If you just have a look at the screen, these are just some areas of life where cells and an understanding of cells uh, would would come in useful. So all living things um, or all um, organisms, uh, make sure you say that word uh, correctly when you're in a biology class, you don't want to embarrass yourself. All organisms uh, are made up of, of cells, but organisms can be split and you can split them into either unicellular or multicellular organisms. So Pause the video, have a look at the diagram, and see if you can tell me what is the difference between a unicellular organism and a multicellular organism. So yeah, unicellular organisms are living things that are made up of one cell only. Uh, whereas multicellular organisms are living things that have more than one cell. And that's what we're going to look at uh, this year. We're just going to focus in uh, um, in third year. We're going to look at multicellular organisms. We're going to look at animals and we're going to look at plant cells. So what do you think? Are there more galaxies in the universe or cells in your body? Well, I'll just let you take a look at the next couple of slides. It'll just blow your mind. So 
So if I was to take you and pull you apart, cell by cell, and lay you out in a line, I would be extremely sick. Um, but you would stretch 19 times around the world. Okay, so first main task that we want you to do is could you please copy down the diagram of an animal cell? So this is what an animal cell can look like. Draw that diagram and copy the table as well. Um, make it quite big, the table, because we want to put a couple of, we want to put sentences in, in the, on the right hand side where we're talking about the function um, of the different parts of the animal cell. And then once you've got that copied down, uh, unpause the video and uh, we'll try and help you to fill in to fill in that table. Okay, so here is a labeled animal cell. Uh, so you can use this, this diagram to help you to, to label your drawing. So it's got a nucleus, uh, cytoplasm, cell membrane, uh, it's got numerous mitochondria, and there are numerous ribosomes as well within that cell. So we're going to now take a look at what do these different parts do? What are the jobs of the different parts of the animal cell? All right. So again, you could maybe just try this yourself at home. Pause the pause the video and, and see if you can work out which of the keywords on the right go with the, the descriptions. Um, so the first one, the description or the function controls the movement of substances into and out of the cell. Second one, the site of protein production, or in other words, where the proteins are made. Third one, it contains DNA, or carries instructions to control the cell. Fourth, it makes up a large part of the cell where the other organelles exist. Um, so an organelle is a bit like an organ in a body, a little bit like that. So you have different organs inside your body and they do different jobs within your body. Well, in a similar way, within a cell, there are organelles and they all do particular tasks or, or roles within, within the cell. And then the final one, the site of respiration where energy is produced. So I am going to put the correct answers in, hopefully. And then check it. Woohoo! So you can use that. You can use that information now to fill in the table that you copied down previously. Okay. So another task you could try. You could try just to understand um, the functioning of a of a cell and what the different parts of the cell do by using uh, an analogy. So an analogy is a, is a comparison between one thing and another to try and help to explain something. So what I'm asking you to do is take a look at the pictures on the screen. Uh, and if a cell, if an animal cell was a country, which parts of the animal cell that we've just mentioned do you think the different pictures represent? So see if you can write down which parts of the animal cell these pictures represent and why you think these pictures represent those, those parts of the animal cell. If you find that really easy or you find that really difficult and you want to try a different analogy, uh, maybe try and think of parts of a school. Um, which parts of the school could represent the different parts of the animal cell uh, that we've just discussed and, and why do the different parts of the school represent those parts of the animal cell? Okay, so, so that's animal cells. We've, we've highlighted or you've been able to now hopefully identify five parts of uh, the animal cell. You can see them there on the, on the left. Uh, cytoplasm, nucleus, ribosome, mitochondria, and cell membrane. We're now gonna take a look inside a plant cell and the structure of a plant cell. And if you, if you look at the diagram, you can see that a plant cell shares <clears throat> a lot of the same parts as an, uh, of, um, as an animal cell. So a plant cell also has a cytoplasm. 
also has a nucleus, also has a ribosome, also has mitochondria, also has a cell membrane. But a plant cell has three additional um, parts to it. And we're going to find out what those three parts do. Pause the video, though. There's a question at the bottom of the, of the screen. Why is it not surprising that plant cells contain more organelles than animal cells? You know, why are plants better than you? Okay, so another question to just to have a think about. Animal cells don't have a cell wall, but plant cells do. So just having a look at the pictures, why do you think potentially plant cells have a cell wall, but animal cells don't need a cell wall? All right, so pause the, pause the video again. Uh, copy down this diagram of a plant cell. And then uh, once you've done that, let the video go again and you can use the next uh, bit of information to help you uh, label the different parts of the plant cell um, and also to, to state what the different parts of the plant cell do. Okay, so here's a diagram of a a plant cell and an animal cell. The plant cell is not the same diagram, exactly the same diagram as the one perhaps that you've just drawn. So be careful when you're labeling the different parts that you get the right parts uh, when you're labeling it. Pause the video, use this information to label the parts, and then play the video again, and you'll find out what the different parts of the cell do. Okay, use this uh, information. If you can draw a table to end the keywords, uh, the key parts of a, of a plant cell, and then a description or the function um, of what these parts do. I've left three of them, nucleus, cell membrane, and cytoplasm. You can do that yourself because you've already learnt what they do in the uh, animal cell. Okay, so we've done quite a lot. Uh, it's quite easy to get confused about which organelles or which parts are found in which cells. So the next activity, the next task, again, we want you to copy down this, this table. And then in the, the two columns on the right-hand side, uh, the A stands for animal, the P stands for plant. Tick uh, the boxes uh, if an organelle is found in that particular type of cell. So if you think a nucleus is found uh, in an animal cell and a plant cell, tick both A and P. If you think it's just animal, then just tick A. But work your way through that, and then I'll show you the answer. Um, just pause the, pause the video now. You big cheat. Did you just let the video play right through to the answers and you just copied them down? That is shocking behavior. Well. Just check your answers, make sure you've got them correct. And then I'm gonna give you a, a few questions just to check, uh, check your understanding. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some questions, next set of, uh, of questions. Just get a piece of paper ready. The answer is either gonna be A, B, C, or D. Just note down what you think the correct answer is. Which part of the cell controls what enters and leaves the cell? Is it A, the vacuole, B, the cell membrane, C, the cytoplasm, or D, the plasmid? Next one. Which of the organelles contains DNA and controls the functions of the cell? Is it A, the nucleus, B, the cytoplasm, C, the cell wall, or D, DNA? Next one, which of the following is made of cellulose in plants? Is it A, cell membrane, B, vacuole, C, cell wall, or D, chloroplasts? Okay, which is the site of photosynthesis in plants? Is it A, vacuole, B, chloroplasts, C, cell wall, or D, cytoplasm? Okay, final one, which is the site of protein synthesis or proteins being made or built up? Is it A, ribosome, B, DNA, 
C nucleus or D cytoplasm. Okay, well done. Uh, you've made it to the end. Uh, so just have a look at this this slide now. Pause the video. Just have a read through the key points and check that you understand each of these key points. So can you explain the importance of learning about cells? Can you tell me why we are doing that? Can you label, identify, name the five main parts of an animal cell? Can you identify, name, label the eight main parts of a plant cell? And can you tell me, probably the trickiest bit, can you tell me what those different parts of the cell actually do, what their function is? If you've got any questions, if you're not sure, please just get in touch with, with your teacher. Okay, well, that, that's all from me. Hopefully see you soon.